What I'm going to talk about here is what's in the leaping and learning, uh, linking smallholders to, to African markets um, report. And I'm just going to give you a, a 10 minute taster of what's in that particular report. So by way of a background, I mean, what are the stimuli that got us motivated on this? And the first one is that sense that at the grassroots in Africa, again, some of the narratives about Africa, an awful lot of innovation, new practice is taking place where all kinds of people, some of them in the private sectors, processors, exporters and the like, some of them specialized NGOs, the Technoserves of this world, the SNVs and so on, uh, Farm Africa and so on, are doing detailed work to improve the links of smallholders both to output markets, but also, of course, to markets which, which provide access to seed, fertilizer, credit, and financial services. And uh, that original hypothesis has been confirmed in spades as we carried out this, this, the, the, this research. Every time we lifted a stone, we found far more experiences than we'd ever bargained for. So there's an enormous amount which is taking place. And while some of it is documented, a lot of it is not documented, or it's documented incompletely, or it's simply not documented thoroughly enough with the degree of rigor where you can say we're absolutely sure that in that particular case these factors led to that particular outcome. But the other thing that you see there is this clear consensus. When you look at what is published, when you look at the case studies, we looked at around about 30 case studies across Africa, a consensus comes out as clear as crystal. And it's a very odd consensus because it's a rather defensive um, consensus. There was a big meeting held in Addis Ababa last November called, um, what was it called, Making the Links. And person after person went up to the podium and said, none of you are going to believe me from what I'm going to tell you now. And then they all parroted the same story. And we all believed them. So, I've got two slides left. None of you are going to believe what I'm going to tell you now, but uh, it's, it's a very odd consensus. Uh, everybody thinks the same, but everybody thinks they're the only ones who actually understand this. So look, here's the framework around which we've structured the information that's in the Leaping and Learning report. And it's a very simple framework, and it says that behind every successful uh, linkage that you see in Africa, you've got three elements. And one of those elements is there has to be a business case. So there has to be an enabling investment climate. There has to be public investment in those rural public goods, the roads, the health, the education, the research and extension that makes it possible for people to get on with their business for the private sector to function. And people have to be looking at the right kinds of products for the best possible markets involved. And just a couple of qualifiers and tasters of what's in that part of the report. When I say an enabling investment climate, some of you in the room will say, oh, for heaven's sake, more World Bank perfectionism going on here. No, the big message is we don't need a perfect enabling environment. We just need to get the worst of the errors in the environment that can be there. Get the elephant traps out of the way. The other taster is the point about markets. The vast majority of the linkages which work and the markets which count for most farmers and the most stable and dependable markets and the markets which most smallholders are able to, to reach are the domestic and regional markets inside of Africa. They are not the export markets, the niche markets, the flying it out of Nairobi markets. Probably no more than one in 20 smallholders can get in on that game. If they can, wonderful. But for the majority, it's the internal markets that matter. But of course, remember, that is very good news. Those internal markets are booming, both in the size of them, and they're booming in the way that they're moving up the value chain. In other words, increasingly, a Nairobi as a market is consuming not just cheap staples, there's higher value produce in there, the fruit, the vegetables, <coughs> the dairy, and so on. Um, next bit is, is that people linking, it's a game of facilitation, yes? 
It's about <laughs> making sure that private actors, small farmers, and those that they deal with in the supply chain, that they can get on with it themselves. Now, if we were to leave it purely to, to market forces, I would doubt that more than one in four small farmers in Africa could get linked productively into markets. Um, they will be in markets as, uh, in, in inefficient and unproductive ways. But to get more people into those market linkages, we do need some level of support. We need little bits of funding, innovative experiences, and so on. And the great art here is to facilitate without setting up systems which are utterly dependent on some outside agency. Yeah? So it's, it's light touch and it's facilitation. And the last part of the framework simply says, well, you've also got to organize the links, and that's the links themselves, which can be anything from spot markets to contract farming. A lot of writing about contract farming. Remarkably sm small percentage of farmers are actually engaged in contract farming. There are many alternatives to contract farming. So it's about organizing the links, and it's about organizing the farmers. In most cases, small farmers can't link directly to the key actors in the chains, the processors, the bankers, and so on. Uh, they're going to have to do that in groups of one kind or another. And there are lots of models of these. And the whole thing is a sort of circular thing. It's highly contextual. What's going to work depends upon the interactions of those three elements inside of all kinds of different circumstances. So look, let's give you an insight into what the key things are on this final side, which just says, you know, here are a few lessons. If you want a few takeaway things. The big thing here is it's about getting the right kind of process in linking farmers to markets. When we began this work, there was this ins insistent question that says, tell us how to scale up successes. And behind that question sometimes is the hope and expectation that the answer is, oh, it's cooperative model B or it's contract type 16. And, of course, the answers are not in the forms. The answers are in getting the broad processes in the right direction. Secondly, and utterly critically, it's all about learning. And a lovely quote from, from one group working in Africa, one of the more unusual experiences, the One Acre Fund in Kenya, uh, where the founder of that particular experience says, yeah, we've got a working program, and that's because we've just about got everything wrong at some particular moment in developing the program. I can't think of a single successful experience I've seen where there hasn't been a wrong turn, a wrong start at some point, but there's been the recognition, the willingness to say, we got it wrong, now we change it, now we learn from that, and we come up with a better way of doing it. So learning, really important. Um, leadership, not necessarily always a, a, a popular element in this, but it's there in all of these cases. There is either an individual or a group of individuals, a coalition of individuals, who are determined to make things happen. And that has to be sustained through time. Um, and there's really no substitute for having some level of lead leadership somewhere in the experiences that we're reviewing if you're to get good outcomes. And the last point I put in here is very much for donors. And that is when you work through the details of what we're saying about processes, learning, leadership, these are not things which... which fit very easily into a logical framework, into short-term targets, into demands for delivery, and above all, demands for certain success. Yes? There's a lot of failures that go on with this, a lot of wrong turns, and some things will just fall flat completely. That's the nature of business startups, whether it's with uh, companies in the UK or whether it's small farmers in Africa. So there has to be an acceptance of those kinds of processes. I think for most donors, those are utterly unacceptable conditions. So donors who want to support this kind of thing, and they should, probably have to work through some of the intermediaries, the Farm Africas, the Technoserves, and so on, the ones who know how to do it. They have to work through, through, through the NGOs which are there, build challenge funds and things like that from which people can 
drawdown on, on, on capital for startup enterprises and respect the nature of a portfolio. A portfolio is a way that you can say, yes, Minister, we will deliver success over a five-year period, even if amongst that success there are some failures. So portfolios is one part of the answer to the donor dilemma of how can we deal with, the, with flexible processes. And the other part is do monitor, do evaluate, and do make sure the stuff gets better communicated, the lessons than we've seen so far. Thank you.